You know, the thing is, is what are we going to do? Are we going to be the body of Christ? And are we going to be the hands and feet in which the Lord has desired for us to be? Or are we going to have the judgmental eyes, the judgmental attitude, and the worldly actions? Because, you know, so many times we allow the worldly ways to come into the church when the church needs to be that of Christ. The title of this message is, Are We Going to Let It Change Us? In Acts chapter 2, if you have a Bible, I ask you to turn there. If you don't, I ask you to reach in front of you and grab one. <clears throat> this is a story that a lot of people know. But there's a part of this story sometimes I think gets overlooked because of the numbers. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, where we're going to start. We're going to go through 47. Starting verse 42 of chapter 2 of Acts, it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. And they all came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they received the food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Now, I wanted to read that real slow. One, you know, I struggle reading. But two, I wanted you to understand and hear the words in which it was in the Word of God that is happening here in Acts. And as I was praying about the things in which took place this past week, there's something that majorly gets overlooked. Because when you back up to verse 41, it talks about 3,000 were added to their number that day. And when we think, oh my goodness, 3,000. And then when we think, oh my goodness, the things in which we've seen happen this week, we get wrapped up in the numbers. And there's one thing that I will always tell everyone. The numbers in which encourage you can be the same numbers which discourage you. Because we cannot put our eyes and our focus on the numbers. Our eyes and focus have to be on that of God. And one thing we have to catch that happens is there were believers, there were Christians there in this area that were praying, that had a relationship with God. But all of a sudden, revival broke out there, and now all of a sudden, things were changing. I got news for you. I have a feeling some things are about to start changing at Calvary. And I got news for you. I believe the things in which are going to change at Calvary are that of God. Because I'm going to do everything in my power to seek Him with everything I have and to hold on to Him. And I pray that you will do the same. But you say, Wes, what are we to do with if things change? Because you know, we don't like change. People don't like change. I don't like change. Especially when you're comfortable. You say, well, it's not broke. Why fix it? Well, here's the thing. If we keep doing things the same old, same old way, we're going to get the same old results until eventually there will be no results. But here's the thing. Can you find me that in the Scriptures? And you can't. You will see through and through the Scripture that things were going in a certain direction. And you notice that the relationship with God, the things with God, all of a sudden just became numb. Kind of died down. It just, it was what it was. And God all of a sudden, He said, we fix that to shake this sucker up. Because they're fixing that to realize who is God. 
and it's not them. And God would do certain things throughout the Bible to get their attention. And here in Acts is one of the things and where some things radically changed. Our very first point, people who continued and steadfast. When we look at verse 32. But before we get into verse 32, I want you to understand what took place in verse 41. It says, those who received the word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Now, I just shared that with you just a minute ago, but I want you to catch that. There were Christians already there. And now all of a sudden they have been infiltrated with about 3,000 people into their little church. Can you imagine If 3,000 people all of a sudden poured into this building, oh my goodness, somebody might have to give up their pew. Somebody may have to slide on their own pew. Oh, is that of God? (laughs) We have to pray about that. But here's the thing. We got to catch this. You, as a body of Calvary Baptist Church, have a responsibility to do. I, as a pastor of Calvary Baptist Church, have a responsibility to do. And we see it in these verses that we're going to look at. Look at verse 42. It talks about them being devoted to the teaching. You see, they were learning the doctrine, the understanding in which was being taught in this area. And then after they were understanding the teaching of the Word of God, They started having fellowship with one another. They started hanging out with one another. They started loving on one another. They were spending time together. Guess what? That is something we need to make sure we're doing. We need to be loving on people. We need to be spending time with people. Because I'm going to tell you, there's one thing that you can give that you can never get back, and that is your time. When you give your time, you can never get that time back. That second that just passed, it's gone. You nor I can get it back. But when we take that second or that minute or that hour and we invest it in someone, they know that we care. But you won't get it back. And that's what's happening in this passage. Another thing that's happening, it says, breaking of bread and prayer. There's something that you need to understand about that phrase of breaking of bread. The meaning in the early believers observed was remembrance of the Lord. It was as of the Lord's Supper. You see, you have to realize there was things that were different then than they are now. And for them to really understand what the Lord had done for them, for them to understand what took place on Calvary, one of the things that they did on a consistent basis, nearly day in and day out, is they broke of the bread and remembrance of His body. They took of the, the blood of the wine and they were remember of the blood of Christ and which was poured out for Him. They did this on a daily basis. What do you do on a daily basis? that reminds you of what Jesus did for you. What he did for your family. What he did for your children, your grandchildren. What do you do on a daily basis that reminds you of that sacrifice that took place on Calvary? Many times we don't do anything. We take it for granted. We say, oh yeah, I remember. I remember. But did you do something that reminded you of the importance of what Christ did for you and me? These people did. Look at our second point. People who stir souls with a godly fear. Look at verse 43. In verse 43, it talks about the awe came upon them. They were seeing the hand of God. They were seeing things move. They were seeing lives being touched. They were seeing. And they were like, wow. Their jaw hit the floor. Their eyes were coming out of their head. And they were like, oh my goodness. Look at what is happening. 
Because remember back in verse 41, 3,000 of them were coming into their fellowship. 3,000 of them just had been saved. And it continues there in verse 43 and it says, being done through the apostles. Who are the apostles? Apostles aren't just me and Jeremy and Brother Robert. No. They're the people in whom put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And if you're sitting in this pew, if you're a member of this church and you've put your faith and your trust in Jesus and He is the Savior and the Lord of your life, you are one of those apostles. You are one of those in whom should be doing the work and your jaw should be on the ground. Your eyes should be bugging out of your head. You ought to be seeing things in which God wants to be doing here. What He wants to be doing in our community. What He wants to be doing in our town. But the question is, what are you doing? We have too many people standing on the sidelines and just warming pews. We have too many people not devoted to the service of Jesus Christ. Many times people say, well, I, I come on Sunday. Well, here's the thing. Nine times out of ten, if that's your mindset, here's your other mindset of church. Check. I did my religion thing this week. I'm good to go. And you go on out and you do your own thing. Do you see anywhere in this passage where they went, check, I did my religious thing this week. I'm good to go. No. They did it day in and day out. They devoted themselves to every moment they woke up to Christ. You say, well, Wes, I, I need some time. I, 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 I got to, you know, I, it's got to be, you know, a little bit for me. Let me tell you something. Do you understand what Jesus did for you? Do you understand that God gave his one and only son for you? And he died a cruel death on a cross for you. All he's asking from you, not that you die for him, but that you live for him. Are you living for him? Are you living for yourself? You see, when we look at this point and one of the things in which going on, are the people who stir the souls. You see, it's not about taking and beating someone over the head with a Bible. It's about touching their hearts, touching to their inner beings. If you take and you just go and you hit your head, someone over the head with a Bible, you just hurting the outside of their body. If you just putting them down and condemning them and telling them how wrong they are, you're not getting to the soul. But when you love them and you give them time, and you help them to understand the Word of God, you help them see the Word of God come alive in your life and into their life, then, and only then, are you piercing their soul. And then, they're understanding what it means to give their heart and soul to Christ. Our third point, People who were together sharing in the ministry. Look at verse 44 through 45. You see here, it talks about how we're together and all things were in common. You see, there's too much division in churches. How can we all be on the same page when some of us are going this direction. Some of us go in that direction. It just doesn't work that way. And because there's so much division, someone going this way and going that way, how can you come together in love and unity? It just doesn't happen. There's too much friction there. And when there's friction and division, how can Christ fill that place with His power and His love? When He looks down upon 
His people and says, y'all are headed in two different directions. Why should I waste my time and pour my spirit and power upon that place? If you can't get together and get right, how are you going to help others get together and get right? You see, as a church in which we have, we have our covenants in how our church functions. We're under our Southern Baptist faith and message. And it shows what our doctrines and our beliefs are. And, and if you can be of accord to that, you need to be together with that. If you don't, you need to find somewhere that you are. Because you need to be somewhere that there is not division, but there's unity. Because when you look at verse 44, you see one of the things it says. It says, all who believed were together. Not just some of them, just not one or two of them, not the majority of them, but that all of them. Calvary, if we're ready to see revival truly happen in this place, we got to get together. And if we can't get together, we need to be somewhere that we can get together. Another thing in which we see, it talks about selling their possessions. Now, I know some of you are about to fall out and have a stroke when you hear that. Because your possessions are very important to you. But let's not get wrapped up in that. Let's go back to one of the things I shared with you a minute ago. One of the things in which you possess is time. And let me tell you something. Time is more valuable than any worldly possession you have. When you know people are in need or people are suffering and you give them time and as you're giving them time, you're going to understand some physical needs that they have. And it may take a little bit of money out of your bank account. It may take something out of your house that you have already that you may not be using and because you gave this person time, you know a need. And you take that and you give to them to help them. Then nowhere in this does it say enable someone to continue to be in a process of that. You see, we spend time with them. We know if I help them here, am I enabling this to continue in their life? Or am I helping them to come out of this that they're able to stand on their own feet? But you see, we have to give to people the things in which are needing to be given. And one of those main things that we have that we can give anyone is time. Notice here, the, they proceeded to all, and as they all had needs, they gave all the things they had. They were meeting needs with ministry. What is your ministry? What is it? Are you gifted musically? Are you gifted in a way to teach? There's a lot of people I say, oh, I'm gifted. I can pray for you. When was the last time you really got down on your knees and you prayed? You sought the Lord's covenants, the Lord's protection, the Lord's power. We're quick to say that we can do things that may be behind the scenes, but in all reality, we don't do a thing. We need people that are prayer warriors that actually are going to pray. We're going to need people that can teach. We need people that can serve, that can help with meals. We need people that can help do stuff. What can you do? What can you say this is my ministry. This is where God has gifted me. This is ability God has put upon me that I can take it and I can use it. What is it? Here's the thing. You need to start asking God to show you what it is. And it's time not to put it on a shelf and say, here's my ministry. But it's time to take it off the shelf and put it into work. It's time to put it into action. It's time to put it into service for the glory and the honor of God. Our fourth point, look at verse 46. When we look at the very first part of verse 46, 
it says, they attended the temple together. They got closer. They were all in one accord. They were all in agreement. They were all in unity. And they continued to come to church. They came to worship day by day. And they were all in one accord. And the Lord looked upon that. And the Lord loved that. And the Lord knew how they were all in unity. And the Lord was pouring His Spirit and His power upon them. And another thing we notice, you see there where they were with glad and generous hearts. They weren't being selfish with the things in which they had. You notice food at that time wasn't as easy to come by. There wasn't no McDonald's down there on the corner. There wasn't no gas station where I can go get some nabs. You know, sometimes they had to actually go and work and get the food prepared. It was a whole ordeal to have able to have food there. It was even sometimes in some places an ordeal just to have water. But these people were willing to do the work in whichever it took to get the food, the water, the things in which were needed. And it says they were glad about it. And then they said they had a generous heart about it. You know what? It's time that we start getting glad about that the Lord has asked us to serve. We need to start getting glad about it that we have the physical ability still to do what we can do. And we need to start doing it in such a way that we're saying, thank you, God, that you're using me and that you're doing something through me to someone else. Instead of, oh me, oh my, I got to do this again. We need to start changing our attitude and we need to start doing the things in which God has called us to do. Our fifth point and last one. People who worship and praise God daily. Look at verse 47. It says that they praised God. They were praising God. It wasn't no ritual. It wasn't no tradition. They were praising God. Look at the next part of verse 47. There were some results that started happening because they were praising Him. There were favor with the people. The people were being shown favor because of their worship for the Lord. For their unity in the Lord. And notice the last part of what was being happening. The results of their worship. Souls were being added to their church. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time that we start praising God. It's time that it's not about us and it is about Him. It's not about numbers. It's not about this and that. But it's time that we start becoming faithful to God because when He looks down upon us, He can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Can He say that to you today? Or is there something in your life that needs to change? Because if it needs to change... Change it. Ask the Lord to give you the strength and the desire to change it. That he may look down upon you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Calvary, it's time that we allow Acts chapter 2 to start becoming our church. It's time that the Lord looks upon us and says, it's time for something big to happen. I'm ready, and I hope you are. Let's pray. Father, I come to you right now.